and you fight on. Oh, we thank God today for his darling son Jesus and all that he has done for us. We're here today to celebrate the life of my Deacon, Deacon Robert Higgins Sr. Amen. I say to him, a job well done. Hallelujah. It is a special day for me. I come here almost 23 years ago and I found him on the Deacon staff. Found him at our Sunday school superintendent which he was very dutiful. And many times he would go to Quincy and drive home on Saturday night to get here for church school on Sunday morning. And he'd be so tired that he couldn't even stay over the morning service. So this is a special day for me and I'm not making an apology for the tightness of the room because this is where he wanted to be. Hallelujah. I got the dining room set up nice and cool with a monitor so no one really has to stand that doesn't want to stand. Amen. You can see and hear everything that's going on on this side uh, right in the dining room next door. Amen. We just trying to accommodate you the best that we can. Amen. But we're here today to celebrate and he managed to help this family through one of the toughest times of their lives. Yes. Amen. They have given us a program, and we're going to ask that you would govern yourselves according to the program that has been printed. Amen. I know, I know quite a few of this family. Amen. And I know they 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 real sticklers of order. Amen. And so we just say to you that we are going to officiate according to order. Amen. At this time, we're going to ask that, amen, we have a solo, first of all, by Shira Walker. Shira Walker. Amen. 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 Don't cry, cause better 
got his own gateway to the scripture, so we're going to read the Old Testament for you. Psalm 150. We're here to celebrate the life of Deacon Hicks. Amen. Life, and at the same time, give God glory. Amen. Praise you the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Yes, Lord. Praise him with the sower and heart. Praise him with the temple and dance. Praise him with the string instruments and organs. Yes, Praise him upon the loud sound. Praise him upon the high sounding sound. Let everything that has breath right. praise the Lord. Yes, Lord. So if you have breath today, yes, you ought to be giving God some praise. Yes, Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 13. All right. mm -hmm. But I would not have you to be ignorant, yes. brethren, Good news. concerning them which are asleep, yes. that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. All right. mm -hmm. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, mm -hmm. Even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Amen. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words.
2024. Dr. Benny McLeod, pastor, Sister Mary Bowden, church clerk, and Sister Cindy McLeod, the reading coordinator.
say, Granddad, if we do the funeral, to do the dance, we're going to do it out the back door. <laughs> so then they put me on to officiate. I said, well, I'll give them a song instead of a dance. <laughs> Amen. But those are our, those are our praise dancers. Amen. But my mother's funeral, you know, they stayed on the bus. <laughs> well, that cousin funeral, you know, they sat outside in the vestibule. <laughs> Amen. They're young and they're children. Amen. Yeah. And you got to work with them. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Also, I know some older people that are not too keen about doing things on the funeral. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. But they are dutiful children. Amen. And I wanted to say that to you, that they didn't just skip out on you. They waited all the way to the last night to finally just say, keep up. We can't do that. They even came to practice on Thursday. And they went all the way to last night and said, keep up. We, we got to just do it. Hallelujah. So I thank God for them. And this time, I want to take this personal time because I knew that Deacon Hicks respected these two individuals and I know that they must think a whole lot of him that they are here today amen he was employed by them for many years at producer fertilizer until he retired until it closed down amen Mr. Joe Dallas Sandra if you just wave your hand or stand up huh? however you feel like it amen and also Sidney Dallas Sandra amen now, if you all want to say something, you know, amen, you can, if you're not, then I just want to acknowledge you all here to this family and for what you have meant to him and to this family down through the years. And I know you know a few others in here also, Hercules Perkins and Sister Rosetta Johnson, amen. So we thank God for, for you all showing today. And this time we open the floor for reflections of those that you would like to come and share uh, some memories of Deacon Hicks, amen. I'm going to share with this family at this time. And if you notice right at the bottom of reflection, <laughs> uh, I put it up there because I thought I may not need to say this. But then again, I said, you know what, preacher? So you might need to read this. Father, 
was to start on me and my grandma. Oh, yeah. I would say I'm truly going to miss him. Yes. I will miss him saying, Daddy, it's time for vacation Bible school. I'm going to meet you. Yes. He was more than the units. Yes. For Miss Vicks. Yes. More like a uncle or grandma. So at this time, I would like my mom here to stand up. Yes. My uncle Bush to stand up. Yes. And my granny wrote that in the way for him.
things he told me not to do. You know, if he wasn't a man to miss words, if he was, if he thought you shouldn't do it, he would, uh, he would tell you you shouldn't do it or whatever. He would tell that son he told uh, Bill McLeod that he would make a good one, but he argued a lot. Well, nobody argued no more than Robert Gates. <laughs> But it was always in love. And he and I, would, um, we came together. You know, we would have different some opinions. We would have problems. But Rock Kicks and I would come together and work those problems out. I'm going to listen to you. Thank you. say that I knew Deacon Hicks 40 years ago or 60 years ago, but four years ago when I came back to Fort Myers and started here at Mount Sinai, I got to meet a man who loved the Lord, loved the Word of God, loved Sunday school, loved this church, and was dutiful in his responsibilities as a deacon. So I, I can't speak to anything in the past. All I can speak is to the point that I knew him and worked with him to this day. And I uh, heard he was in the hospital and I went to the hospital and I visited with him and he was so happy to see me for, for a couple of minutes and, and then he, uh, he went a different way. But we just, we just want to stand and, and reassure you and let you know as family and friends that if anyone is going to get those words said to them, well done, that good and faithful servant, it will be 
Deacon Hicks. Not that I could put any words in God's mouth. I'm just talking about my experience and what I saw. God bless you. To the family, peace be unto you. Good, good. 
And um, I don't know what we would have done without Rosetta Johnson and her husband, Richard. He, Richard worked for my dad. Um, where is she? Her I don't know what part of the family we have these ladies because they helped me so much when my mom and dad needed help they, when they were sick and they were there for us and they did everything to So anyway, um, I know you're going to miss him because he was a pretty, pretty great man. Thank you. 
we serve him today. Amen. He comes today to say a word to this family from the Lord, recognizing that it really doesn't matter what all we say, but it's what the Lord says that really matters. One thing about the Word of God, it will not change and it will help you. Amen. Even if you don't understand it right now. Oh, in the by and by, once they get inside of it. Hallelujah, somebody. Always say that about lawyers. Even if the judge strikes your testimony. The judge knows that if he the, 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 the lawyer knows that if he gets it in your ears, you can't forget what you heard. Somebody need to hear me today. Huh? He can say, strike it all he wants to. You already heard it. Hallelujah. So the one thing about it today is we bring the word of God. Amen. I know you you heard it. And it will do you good in the end. Hallelujah. Amen. We want to take a few moments today as we recognize uh, our deacon. Amen. Our faithful deacon. Amen. Deacons and pastors have some strange relationships. That's the best way I can say it. It's strange. Hallelujah. Hallelujah sometimes, huh? Amen. But there are relationships that many people don't understand. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why anybody just can't be a deacon. So many times the pastor bounces off the deacon. And he don't know if he's taking it personally. Hallelujah. And you're really trying to get an answer. And he's trying to protect himself. Hallelujah. It's a strange relationship. The Lord led me to this passage today, and I want to share this with this family and with these deacons that are gathered here today. First Timothy, chapter number three, and verse number 13. First Timothy, chapter three. And verse number 13. And it says, For they that have used the office of a deacon well, purchase to themselves a good degree and a great boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus. I need to read that again because I want you to hear really what this passage is saying. He said, For they that have used the office of a deacon well. Well. I didn't say well in name. But he that uses the office of a deacon well purchased to themselves a good degree and a boldness in the faith which he is in Christ Jesus. I want to talk just a few minutes today about a good deacon's reward. Look at somebody say, a good deacon. Reward. Now see, you, just don't, you can't just say this about anybody. And then you can't say it about every deacon. Hallelujah. But a good deacon. Reward. When I think about deacons and, and what deacons do for the ministry, I need to ask you a question, first of all. How would you like a job? Mm -hmm. Amen, Brother James, you know, he our chairman. I don't he can relate to this. A job that will work you very hard, but pay you nothing. <laughs> Did y'all hear what I'm saying? And pay you nothing. Huh? Suppose, suppose this job required you to be on call 24 hours 
but dead. Yes. They some deacons in there what I'm talking about. They have to pay everybody else, but they don't get paid. With no payment, no gas, no repair, give me better sleep, no mileage. This one of my young, young brothers coming on getting ready to be a deacon. It's good for me to hear this today. Isn't that right? Huh? And then what if it required you to be absent from your family frequently? Huh? And not only does it require you to be absent from your family, but sometimes it exposes you to, to undue criticism. That's how I'm like a preacher then. <laughs> so I'm talking about a good deacon. Huh? Amen. Un, un, undue criticism. And, and it also opens you up to unfair comments. I'm talking about a good deacon. Isn't that right? Yeah. And Richard Johnson used to argue so much. Somebody think we didn't even get along. <laughs> but don't you mess with the two of us. All right. And Robert Hicks was the same way. Robert gets so mad but sometimes Robert leave here crying and come back the next day, hugging me and going on. <laughs> but that's just, that's just the way it works. Hallelujah. Because we got to work it out for the good of all. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes this job often make you sick and worry about the concerns of others. Huh? Huh? Amen. Now, I've been talking about a few things. Now, I need to ask you, if you saw this on today, how many of y'all have put in for this job? I don't see no tickers. Not even the one to set aside. <laughs> Isn't that right? But a good deacon knows where his reward is. Isn't that right? Huh? Too, too, too often, too often uh, today, deacons take the office in the church. Say anything, and I wouldn't say a word. 
not knowing what was going to happen within a year's time. Yes. Hallelujah. My, my Lord, my this Lord. helped the pastor because I didn't have to go and find a new superintendent right. Right. with no training. Amen. Amen. Some people like own the job training. Hallelujah. Teachers have to go to school before they start teaching. Isn't that right? But when it comes to the church, people want to get a job they have no. No training. What do you need help train her? To take on this road. That's why you see her sitting on this front row. Amen. Hallelujah. He loved her and she loved him. Amen. Amen. And when I say loved, I'm not talking in past tense. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Huh? Amen. Amen. But I'm not going to hold you too long today if it pleases God. But I do want to hasten to tell you, first of all, that he will be measured. A deacon is measured, first of all, by his salvation. Can I help you? Huh? He's measured by his salvation. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying a man who served as a deacon, huh, must meet the biblical qualification. Hallelujah, somebody. Huh? And first of all, first and foremost, more than anything else, the Bible says that he must be born. Y'all can hear me. You just don't pick anybody for a deacon. He must be born again. Of God. Yes. Huh? Yes. 
and the good deacon. Can I tell you the good deacon has a testimony that speaks of commitment to the cross. Huh? Hallelujah. It's commitment and determination to live for God. Isn't that right? You sit there and tell me, man, that's a pastor many times I want to leave this place. The Lord just wouldn't let me go. Hallelujah. Second thing I want to tell you that he will be measured by his character. Yes. Did I say character in 2024? Yes. Is that still a word in 2024? I said he has to be measured by his character. Huh? And you know, some people always think life is a joke. They joke about everything. Everything is a joke. But when you're a deacon, the Bible says that you must be serious minded. Yes, that's right. Now, serious mind don't mean you're prone, but it means you're serious about what you do. Isn't that right? He must understand the seriousness of his task and approach it with a dedicated spirit. Huh? Yes. Can I talk to him about his personality then? Mm -hmm. Being me talking about his character. Yeah, right. We're talking about his character. I, I need to tell you that, first of all, his personality must be of such that he speaks the truth. Huh? Huh? Even if it's not politically correct to do so. Uh -oh. I'm going to know. Hallelujah. Many things are lawful, but they're not expedient for the child of God. Y'all didn't hear me, did you? That's right. There are some things that is legal for you to do, but it's not the right thing. Hallelujah. And how many know you can't do everything someone else did? Something might be all right for one person, it's not all right for you. I just thought about where I got this picture from about equality. Mm. I, I, I thought this sort of speech of equality of three men standing at a fence, peeking over, peeking over watching a ball game. Daddy, the middle son, and the baby. Uh -huh. So equality says to give all three of them a basket to stand on. All right. Yeah. The daddy mm -hmm. was standing tall over the fence on his basket. Uh -huh. The middle boy could see over the fence, but the baby boy was down behind the fence. <laughs> what real equality is when you take the basket from the daddy that don't need That's right. Amen. Yeah. and give it to the little boy. Uh -huh. The daddy still can see over the fence. The middle boy can see over the fence. Everybody don't need the same thing. Oh, I need the idea. That's another whole sermon. But I'm talking about character. Isn't that right? Amen. 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 In other words, in other words, in other words, what I'm saying to this requires you need strength. Huh? Yeah. To be a good deacon, it requires a unique strength of character. In other words, the Bible says he must be sober yeah. in his thinking. That's right. Huh? That's right. Sober, sober in his thinking and in his conduct. In other words, he can't be one who is intoxicated with liquor. Uh huh? And intoxicated with the concern of this world. Can I say this? Yes. 
I'm almost through. And I might, I, I might hoop a little, but I really want to be clear today. Hallelujah. He was in the teaching side of our church. Huh? Yeah. That Sunday school superintendent. <coughs> Since becoming a Christian, he, he should have a blameless reputation. Did you hear the first part of that? Since becoming a Christian. Hallelujah. If you dig far enough back in you, you had it before you became a Christian. Huh? Don't you, don't you believe this business that you still do the same thing you did before you were born again? Hallelujah. I knew it was going to get quiet there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because some of you listen to these fellas. Huh? Oh my God, know you human. <laughs> Can I tell you God know what he did for you also? <laughs> huh? God know what he saved you from? Huh? Can I help somebody real good right here? Huh? He should not be viewed as a bad Yeah. 
When these niggas in here do everyone, do everything. Hallelujah, I know. I'm moving, I ain't trying to persuade no one. Huh? Hallelujah. I teach my people this, you, you're an extension of this ministry. That's right. You do ministry. You do ministry, you're a part of the ministry. That's why you are ordained. You are ordained for ministry. No other office in the church other than the pastor and the deacons are ordained. You ain't gonna do ministry, you wouldn't need to be ordained. Hallelujah, son. Can I say this? Hallelujah. A good deacon, the good deacon serves in the field. He, he don't just sit on a board. Huh? Well, all is required of him is to appear from time to time. Huh? In other words, good deacons are supportive of the pastors. Huh? They are as an assist, as an extension of his pastoral spirit and his pastoral service that he gives for the benefit of the public and the prophet. Huh? Can I tell you what sometimes you'll be called do boy? <laughs> Not by your pastor. By other folk. <laughs> Hallelujah. Huh? You get taken up for the pastor. Huh? But a good deacon is strong enough. Huh? Hallelujah. To accept the pastor's lead. Huh? A good deacon regularly visits the sick and the wounded in the area. A good deacon is rarely absent from any gathering of the congregation because he's aware that he is an example of those amen, who looks to him for leadership. Yeah. Yeah. No way in the world you can tell someone that you're the superintendent. You tell somebody to come to church school mm -hmm. and you ain't going. <laughs> you invite somebody to church and they get there <laughs> and you are not there. Come on. That's the word for the so and so. Well, it's just so-and-so. I don't, I don't want to tell somebody I don't know. <laughs> but I don't know. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. Huh? In other words, in other words, a good deacon helps the poor, his friends, to, to the young. He gives friends to the young and is a champion for the cause of Christ. Let me get ready to get out of here. The last thing I want to say to you today. Amen. Our life's works will be rewarded. Yes. Amen. Huh? Yes. Could you say that with me? Our life's work. Our life's work. Huh? When the books are open. The statement may be made, server, give an account yes. of your stewardship. Yes. Yes. How many know all of us got to stand before God? Yes. 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 I need to tell you the servant that does well. Yes. Huh? Won't need to be a buster. You don't need to stammer or stutter. But the words of the songwriter might come to mind. The songwriter says, made the service. I'm done. Speak for me. Isn't that right? I'm so glad that the reward that God planned for the righteous are not reserved for a certain class of believers. I'm glad to know that when the call goes out to bring out the long white robe, that it won't be just for preachers yes, and deacons only. Yes, I'm glad to know that when the golden crown 
It's about power. Yeah, it won't be reserved for preachers and Sunday school teachers yes, alone. Yes, yeah, preacher, I need you to know that Paul said, hit forth. There is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. What I'm saying is every, every saint of God expects to receive a crown of righteousness. Hallelujah, when they've given the Lord the best of their service. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes, when you have been a good choir member, right. one of these days the call is going to come yeah. telling you to come on up a little higher. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. If you've been a good usher, yeah. serving Sunday after Sunday, one of these days, there's going to be a call that is coming. Say, come on up a little bit higher. In your pride, if you have been a faithful member of the prayer band, praying for the souls. Yeah. Oh, 
Thank you. 